Problem child two, it's meaner, nastier, and insanely disgusting, and my 10 year old self loved every minute of it, where I just let myself be engulfed by its comical repulsiveness. Even as a kid, I felt like this sequel to Problem Child was really pushing boundaries and taking things to the next level. And in a way, that was part of its appeal. Released in 1991, Problem Child 2 sees John Ritter return as Ben Healy, where he and Junior head to a new town to start a new life, where Junior has a few obstacles to overcome, like the sinister Lawanda, who wants to marry Ben and kick Junior out, and fellow Problem Child Trixie, who's probably even more psychotic than Junior is, in this oddball sequel, which is truly something else, thanks to all the electrocuting, pee drinking, dog pooping, bug squishing, and of course the infamous carnival puking, in this movie which is truly far out there, and dives into awesome vulgar insanity. Dare I say it, as a kid, I actually preferred Problem Child 2 to the original. Yes, the first movie was the one that everyone loved, and it definitely was the more commercially friendly one. But the fact that part 2 was just so cuckoo and off the scales and downright gross made it really stand out to me. So, 10 things you didn't know, check it out we shall. Number 10, Problem Child 2 was rushed into production due to its child actor's age. Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski are an American writing duo who wrote the first Problem Child movie. After that movie was a huge success, it was decided that a sequel must follow, hoping that all that Problem Child lightning will strike twice. However, Problem Child 2 was rushed into production on the account of its main star, Michael Oliver's age, as he was 9 to 10 at the time, and they wanted to quickly make a sequel before he grew up too much. Despite this, the studio was also reluctant to rehire Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski, as the first movie did get a lot of criticisms for its tasteless vulgarity. But Alexander and Karaszewski were still hired, as once again, the movie needed to be produced super quick, and Alexander and Karaszewski would be able to deliver the goods quickly, as they were already familiar with the story and formula, as opposed to hiring new writers, who would have been starting from fresh. Incidentally, after the Problem Child movies, the writing duo would go on to pen the scripts for many movies that have gone on to be considered as classics, like Ed Wood, The People vs. Larry Flint, Man on the Moon, 1408, and Goosebumps. Wow, and to think their brilliant career just started with a little shit called Junior. Number 9, a John Waters movie for kids. So yeah, as mentioned, the first Problem Child movie got a fair bit of criticism for being offensive and inappropriate. And the backlash seemed to spur Alexander and Karaszewski to be even more repulsive and offensive. Yep, this time when they wrote Problem Child 2, it was all out war, when they went out to prove that the first Problem Child movie was nothing compared to part two. This one was the real shocking gross out movie. And that's why Problem Child 2 is the way that it is, why it's so edgy, and why it's so weird and surreal. It was like the writers sticking it to the critics of the first movie. In fact, Alexander and Karaszewski took inspiration from John Walters and Pasolini, in that they wanted to use their style of taboo bad taste cinema, and use it in a movie that's made for kids. And I can see the connection. Especially with John Waters. I mean, if you watch Crybaby and Problem Child 2 back to back, it almost feels like they exist in the same universe. The fact that Problem Child 2 was intended to be a shocking John Waters-esque movie for kids oddly makes me appreciate it even more. Number 8, Filming Location. Problem Child 2 was given to TV producer and first-time director Brian Levant, who would go on to have great success in the 90s, directing fellow kids' movies like Beethoven, The Flintstones, and Jingle All The Way. The movie shoot took place from January to March 1991, with most of the filming taking place in Orlando, Florida. In fact, Problem Child 2 was one of the first movies to be filmed at Universal Studios Florida, which just opened up seven months earlier in 1990. 
Yep, when Steven Spielberg first opened up Universal Pictures Florida, I wonder if he had any idea that this new and exciting place of many cinematic possibilities would immediately be used to film a heap of people puking up all over the place. By the way, number 8.5, Junior's insane bed thing. Seriously, what even was Junior's bed in Problem Child 2? It's like a spaceship, arcade, and a bed. Come on, who didn't watch Problem Child 2 as a kid and immediately want that bed? Number 7. Story about the funfair ride scene. Now we get to Problem Child 2's biggest contribution to cinematic history. The scene that everyone no doubt immediately thinks of when they think of Problem Child 2. The puking carnival scene. Where after Junior gets taunted for not being able to ride on a crazy dance, he messes with the mechanics, causing everyone to puke up all over the place, causing one epic and gross bar for Rama. We even see parents puking on their kids. Seriously, what parents would do that? The whole thing is disgusting and is Problem Child 2 at its most bad taste-ness. As a kid, I watched shows like Round the Twist, so I was totally on board with gross-out stuff. But yeah, this scene even made me a bit squirmish, but I still loved it. Ivy and Schwann, who played Trixie, and Eric Edwards, who played Junior School Bully, have recently spoken up about the scene. Edwards said that the puke itself was mainly just made up of food, like uncooked corn of cream and mushrooms mixed in with water. Schwann added that it smelt disgusting. Schwann also said that despite being too little to go on the ride, she still got to ride it to film the scene, and found it to be a lot of fun, but got very dizzy after 30 minutes. And Edwards added that the whole spinning that was taking place from the ride was actually really making him feel sick too. Edwards said that it was really cold when filming that scene as it was shot in February, and having all that fake puke on him was also really cold, especially when, as he puts it, he got cocooned in it. Yeah, look, that scene is definitely not for those with weak stomachs. Number six, Ben Healy is a criminal. Okay, this is a tiny detail, but one that I think is really interesting. But the Jeep that we see Ben and Junior enter their new town in, which becomes their subsequent family car, is actually the same Jeep that Ben borrowed slash stole from the Roy character at the end of the first movie. So with this, we can assume that Ben never actually did return Roy's Jeep, but decided to keep it. So yeah, Ben Healy is a thief. No wonder he's fleeing town. In fact, Problem Child 2 has several subtle ties to the first movie. In the scene where Junior shows Ben his science project, which is a doll sitting on an electric chair, the doll in question was designed to look like the bow tie killer, aka the villain from the first movie. And Problem Child 2 sees the return of Gilbert Gottfried as Peabody, and Jack Warden as Big Ben, who's even more unlikable this time round along with Amy Yazbek, who played Flo in the original movie. Now she's playing a different character, a school nurse called Annie, and is a much more likeable character this time around. And John Ritter and Amy Yazbek would go on to get married in real life in 1999, and were married right up until Ritter's sad passing in 2003. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I really miss John Ritter. Number five, sequel and series. Despite there being a rush to quickly produce a Problem Child 2, it seems that afterwards there wasn't much of a demand for a third entry. However, Problem Child 3 was eventually made in 1995, with Problem Child 3, Junior in Love, with it being a made-for-TV movie, which I think has more or less gone on to become a forgotten film. I felt like the third movie kind of felt safer and neutered, without any of the real edge of the first two movies, especially the second one. And I also think that not having John Ritter and Michael Oliver returning hurt the movie, as they were a double act, which in my opinion was the main appeal of the series. However, this time Ben was played by William Catt, of Carrie and the Greatest American Hero fame, and he obviously wasn't scared that they're all gonna laugh at him, as he does give the part his all. There was also an animated series which ran for two seasons in 1993 to 1994, where Junior continues to terrorize everyone, now in Saturday morning cartoon form. I never liked the design of Junior. I felt like they were trying to make him look cool and give him a 90s makeover by giving him spiky hair. But to me, Junior will always have a bowl cut. Look, it is what it is. I can vaguely remember watching the Problem Child cartoon and it didn't exactly wow me, but meh, I guess I found it okay, I guess. 
Number four, deleted scenes. Okay, there are several deleted scenes that weren't shown in the theatrical cut, but were added to some of Problem Child 2's TV broadcasts, which was a common practice back in the day, as it extended the movie's runtime and thus would allow for more commercials. These scenes include a scene where Trixie is pretending to be nice to Junior, where she puts a sign on his back saying, happy to be a sissy. Along with a scene where little Ben spots a woman exercising out in the street, where he puts on his creepy stalker face and goes out to talk to her, much to the dismay of Junior. Another scene where while in the nurse's office, Junior learns that Trixie has stolen a station wagon. I like this scene as we see Junior smiling, like he's building up an appreciation for Trixie on the account that she's as crazy as he is. The following scene shows Junior trying to convince Ben to go to the pizza restaurant, which we do see in the film. But this scene puts a different spin on it, with it being suggested that Junior did this on purpose to set his dad up with Annie, which resulted in Annie getting a pizza to the face, where no one asked Annie if she's okay. Yeah, look, most of the deleted scenes don't really add much, but they are still interesting to watch. You know, just to see some rare footage that didn't make it. Number three, Lawsuit. Yep, I've said it once and I'll say it again, but I never like it when legal issues and lawsuits get in the way of movies, but in the wake of Problem Child 2, that's what happened. So according to Wikipedia, you know, that site with all the wikis, Universal Pictures took Michael Oliver's mum slash manager to court on the account that just before filming started, she supposedly told the studio that if they wanted her son to reprise his role of Junior, then they had to increase his fee. Afterwards, Oliver retired from acting, which I think is a shame as he had great comedic timing. But that said, he also claims to enjoy his nice quiet existence. And he still seems to have a love for his problem child fame, as a few years ago he took part in a photo shoot with Ivy and Schwann, Amy Yazbek and Eric Edwards, where they recreated some old promotional photos, including the movie poster of Problem Child 2. So it's nice knowing that those involved in the movie seem to have a fondness for it. Number two, Woody Woodpecker was used to put parents at ease. So as mentioned, Problem Child 2 was deliberately made with the intentions to stick it to the critics, who moaned and complained about the first movie. That's why Problem Child 2 goes all out with its vulgar bad taste. However, the original cut of Problem Child 2 may have been a bit too nasty and vulgar, as the first cut of the movie was hit with an R rating. Yep, Problem Child 2 rated R. Hell yeah, I'm totally down with this, bring it on. However, Problem Child 2 is meant to be a family movie, so cuts and trims had to be made. Something that made the MPAA really cross was Junior using the term <laughs> whipped. The line got dubbed over, which got Problem Child 2 what's called a PG rating on a pill. <laughs> Man, it sounds like the movie was on trial or something. The studio was still really worried that parents may not know that this movie that they had taken their children to see is in fact a kids movie. So when it was screened in some theatres, the 1947 Woody Woodpecker animated short Smoked Hams would be shown before the movie, as a way to reassure parents early on that it's okay. This is in fact a kids movie, we promise. I mean, after all, would a movie that's not aimed at kids start off with a Woody Woodpecker cartoon? Please, for the love of God, release the R cut. We need to see this. I need to see this. Number one, destroyed by another second installment. Problem Child 2 made its way to cinemas in July 1991 to the delight of children and their squirmish parents. It made nearly $33 million on a budget which sat somewhere between 11 to 15 million. This was a significant drop in numbers compared to the first movie, which made over $72 million. The biggest thing that killed Problem Child 2 was releasing it the same weekend as fellow second installment, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which was just devouring the box office at the time. In fact, Problem Child 2 and Terminator 2 are actually kind of similar in a weird way. They both feature a rebellious kid and both feature the song Bad to the Bone. Problem Child 2 was a movie to annoy the critics by design, and well, that's exactly what happened, whom of course panned it for its bad taste gross-out humour, bad language, and generally being inappropriate for kids. But me personally, I loved it, and so did all my friends. The film also took another hit because of its PG-13 rating and edgy reputation. 
Look, say what you want to say about Problem Child 2. The movie had guts and lots of vomit. The filmmakers went out to make a movie that pushed boundaries and take the family movie trope that one step further. It was a brave move, especially in the wake of Home Alone. The popular thing to have done would be to go more cutesy and family friendly like that movie. But nope, the makers of Problem Child 2 were like, nah, we're going to be as disgusting as possible. Although it was shocking back then, I do think the movie does get better with age. Often when I make these videos, I talk about popular movies that people really like, and I feel like there's always an obligatory part where I say, of course the critics hated it. It nearly happens in every video. And Problem Child 2 is kind of a retaliation to that. I guess maybe having a go at the perceived snobbery. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with critics, of course. They are entitled to an opinion. Heck, to a degree, I myself am one. Be that one without any credentials or college education in that field. So Problem Child 2 is really kind of like the ultimate F you to the critics. So to me, that makes it a really fascinating movie. And a funny one. So if you haven't eaten anything and have a strong stomach, I say check out Problem Child 2. The movie is really off the charts and insane. Problem Child 2 is like the first movie only turned up to 11. I understand that some people don't like the movie and find it to be tasteless and mean-spirited and that's okay. It's all about tastes and what floats your boat. So I will say this, it is not a movie for everyone. But if you like crude, gross-out humour, then you will get a lot of joy out of Problem Child 2. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I really want an arcade rocket ship bed like Junior. That'll be awesome. See ya!